In this lesson, we're going to look at interval notation, another way to write an inequality that uses brackets and parentheses in order to denote the beginnings and end of intervals. Interval notation is very easy to work with. Let's take a look at some exercises. We'll see how it works and how we can use it to describe sets of numbers. Consider this example. We're looking at the set of numbers from negative 3 to positive 6, including negative 3 and not including 6. We could write this using an inequality as we see here, but we could also write this using interval notation. With interval notation, we look at the endpoints, negative 3, positive 6. Those are the two numbers that we'll write down. That shows where the interval begins and where the interval ends. Now, we have to decide whether to put a parenthesis or a bracket for each of these ends. We use this rule. If it's included, a solid circle, we use a bracket. If the number is not included, it's an open circle, we use a parenthesis. Because this interval includes negative 3, we have a bracket at negative 3. The interval does not include 6, so we have a parenthesis at 6. And now we've written this interval using interval notation. Here are four exercises for you to try. Can you look at each of these sets given by the interval notation and draw this on the number line? Be sure to pay close attention to open circles and closed circles to show the numbers that are included and not included. Please pause the video here and complete these exercises. In exercise 1, we are going between positive 2 and positive 9. Positive 2 has a parenthesis, that's an open circle. The number 2 is not included in the set. 9 also has a parenthesis, which indicates that it's an open circle on the number line. The number 9 is not included in this set. However, all values between 2 and 9 are. On exercise 2, we have endpoints at negative 8 and positive 7. Notice that the negative 8 has a bracket, which tells us that it is included in the set. We use a solid circle on the number line. 7 also has a bracket, so we use a solid circle on the number line to also indicate that it's included in this set. Exercise 3 we have from negative 7 to positive 4. Negative 7 is included, it has a bracket, so we have a solid circle on the number line. 4 has a parenthesis, open circle on the number line, 4 is not included in this set. Finally, from negative 3 to 7 in exercise 4, negative 3 is not included, and 7 is included. The next exercises involve a number line that's given to you and we're asked to write the set using interval notation and using an inequality. Can you write these sets? Please pause the video here and complete these exercises. In our first set, we have from negative 5 to positive 3. Notice that we have solid circles, so on interval notation, we're going to have brackets. Using the inequality, we're going to use the less than or equal to signs because negative 5 and positive 3 are in the set. On the second exercise, we have the interval from 1 to 9. Both have open circles, which indicate that 1 and 9 are not included in the set. Therefore, we use parentheses. We can write this as an inequality. 1 is less than x, which is less than 9. x is between 1 and 9. Finally, on the last exercise, we have from negative 2 to positive 6. Negative 2 is a solid circle, which means it's included. We'll use a bracket. 6 has an open circle, which indicates that it's not included. We'll use a parenthesis. Finally, we can write that using an inequality, as you see on the screen. What about sets that continue endlessly in one direction? We've always written the endpoints, but what if there is not an endpoint? We have to use the idea that sets move forever toward infinity or negative infinity. It's important to remember that infinity and negative infinity merely indicate a direction of endless movement. These are not actually numbers. In this case, we have the set x is greater than or equal to negative 8. We'll begin with the end point on the left, negative 8. We used a bracket because there's a solid circle which indicates that negative 8 is included. How about on the right-hand side? Well, the set moves on endlessly toward positive infinity. So we write from negative 8 to positive infinity. When we use an infinity symbol, we always use a parenthesis. The reason for that 
is that infinity is a direction. They're not actual numbers. And because they're not actual numbers, we can never really include them. We can never reach that point. That's why with an infinity symbol, you will always use a parenthesis. In exercises 8 through 11, we have sets given to us written as inequalities. Can you graph these on a number line and then write the set using interval notation? Please pause the video here and complete these exercises. In exercise 8, we have x is less than or equal to 5. That's from negative infinity to positive 5. Remember, whenever you use an infinity symbol, be sure to use a parenthesis. Number 9, we have x is greater than 3 from positive 3 to infinity. Exercise 10, we have two pieces. We have between negative 7 and 1, or from 4 to positive infinity. We simply graph each piece, and then we write each corresponding part using interval notation. Finally, in number 11, we're using the same idea, from negative 7 to 2, or from 3 to positive infinity. And so now we've seen that we can use interval notation synonymously with inequalities. If we have a set that continues endlessly in one direction, we use positive or negative infinity. If we have a set that's bounded by two endpoints, we simply use the two endpoints as the ends of the intervals, along with parentheses or brackets. And if we have a set that's all real numbers, meaning it includes every number on the number line, well, we have a set from negative infinity to positive infinity. So interval notation really is that simple to use. All you have to do is look at the number line, write the numbers in order from left to right with the endpoints, and use the parentheses or brackets in order to show whether those endpoints are included or not included. This is everything you need to know to get started working using interval notation.